Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be taking a look at the basics of animating with bones and armatures. This is all part of a much bigger course on the basics of animation. You can find other free courses on my website and you can also join in the Animation Challenge which is an animation challenge for the month of May. Details on this and everything else can be found in the links in the description. Now this is not a rigging tutorial, I've got other tutorials on that and I'll put them in the links in the description. But this is just so you understand the basics of bones and parenting. So here's the basic startup file and we're going to make a basic snake. So I'll take the default cube, go into edit mode with tab and you can see my shortcut keys down the bottom here. And I'm just going to scale this up in the X axis. So S then X and scale in the X axis. Now if I wanted to add lots of bones to this and make this a snake type creature, it won't work at the moment because the bones will only animate the vertices. So this won't bend because it has no vertices in the middle. So what I'm going to need to do is press Control R to do a loop cut, use my wheel and create lots of loops, double left click to set those. And now I've got lots of vertices to deform. I'm going to make my snake a bit longer actually. So I'll tap A to select all and scale in the X again. So now we've got a bit more of a snake. So back into object mode with tab, and I'm also going to add a subdivision surface modifier by pressing Control 2. That adds a subdivision surface modifier with two levels. So I want to set up some bones to attach this snake to, and the bones will act like the snake's skeleton. So when the skeleton moves, the skin or the mesh will move with it. So what we do, we go to Add, Shift A for short, or you can go up to Add at the top here, and you'll find it under Armature and there's single bone. There's some other useful stuff as well, but single bone is what we're going to use at the moment. And you can hardly see it, it's in the middle there. The first thing to do is make that visible through our object. We can go to the object data settings or the armature settings and go to viewport display and there's an option in front. This used to be called X-ray in 2.79. So we tick that and we can see our bones. Now let's go to front view with one on our numpad and I want to create lots of bones along here as if it's the spine of my snake. So let's grab this bone in the X axis and move it across to the front. And there's three modes for bones. There's object mode, there's edit modes, and there's pose mode. Object mode and edit mode are the same as mesh objects. So one's for grabbing the whole object and one's for editing the individual bones in this case. But lastly, there's pose mode, and that's what you use to animate. Let's go into edit mode for now and you can grab different parts of your bone. I'll just zoom into it a little bit by pressing full stop on my numpad to zoom into my object and you can grab both ends or the whole bone. In this case, I'm going to left click and grab the top end G to grab it and move it into position about there. Let's zoom out again now. That's great. And then in the same way you do with objects, you press E to extrude and you can pull out another bone and I'm going to constrain it to the X axis as well. So E then X and I'll just make my bones go across the middle here. So I've gone halfway, not particularly even, but you can go in and you can edit these points. So G then X and you can edit points if you need to. And you'll notice as well that all these are attached to each other at the moment. What you can also do, I've done half my bones, so I'm going to copy and paste these to the other half. So let's select them all. I'll do B to box select. Let's get that last one as well. And then Shift D to duplicate and bring a load to the end. Now these two bones aren't attached, as you can see, and that will make a difference. So if I go to pose mode now, you'll see that not only are these bones attached, but they're parented. So if I turn this one with rotate, you can see that it rotates all the other ones. If I rotate this one, it rotates the other ones further down the line because they are parented to one another. So that's parented to this one, and that one to this one, and that one to this one, and so forth. So if I select all my bones now and press Alt-R, that removes all their rotations. But I've got a problem because this one is not attached to this bone here and it needs to be attached in a long line so I can move my snake from its tail. So let's go back to edit mode and parent in the normal way. So select the first bone that you want to attach and lastly, the active object, the one you select last, that's the one you're parenting to. And then press Control p for parent and in this case, we're going to go connected. So it will suddenly move across and connect together. Now it's also worth pointing out that if you duplicate a bone, let's duplicate this one for example. Can you see this black line down here? 
That means it is parented and there's an offset to the parent. So if I go into pose mode now, and if I rotate this one, you can see that this is still a child of this one. And that's what that black line there means. So let's undo that movement. You can remove parents by in edit mode, pressing Alt P and clear the parent. Back to pose mode and now it's not attached. I'll quickly go back to edit mode and delete this bone by pressing delete and then bones. And I've got my basic rig for my snake set up here. So how do I attach it to my mesh so that the mesh is deformed when I move the bones? In the same way you normally parent things, so back into object mode, we select our mesh first and then the bone second, so they'll be the active object and therefore the parent, and press Control P. The easiest way is with automatic weights, which is selected there, and that will set up what are called weights. I'll quickly show you what's meant by weights, so I'll click on my object and I'll go to weight painting mode, and you can see this bone I had selected here is influencing this area in red, and it's not influencing this area in blue, and these different shades of blue, green, and yellow are the sort of in-between areas, and you'll see what that means later. So back to object mode. Now let's go to our bones. Now if I go to edit mode and move this around, it won't move my mesh. I have to be in pose mode, and then you can see my mesh starting to move. I'll undo that. You should also be able to see the influence of the weighting. So let's go to the bone we had selected before, rotate, and this is the area that was in red, and this is the area that was in blue, and these in-between bits are being slightly affected by this bone, but also being slightly affected by this bone as well, hence the slight distortion. And that's always a problem, and good weight painting will stop these sort of weird distortions and pinching, but it is quite tough, especially with sort of low poly characters with thick areas like this. So how can we animate this? Well, in order to animate, you must be in pose mode, Having said that, you can actually be in object mode, insert a keyframe, move along a bit, so 10 frames, grab your whole object, and insert another keyframe for location, and you can move your whole object, which is fine and kind of has its place. I'm just going to undo that. But generally, you do all your animation in pose mode. It is the case that if we set up, let's say, a weird walk cycle for our snake, we could set up the cycle repeat it, but then we could move the whole object along in object mode and animate that, and that would save us having to repeat each cycle of the walking. So it does have its place to animate in object mode, but we're going to stick to pose mode. What I'm also going to do is bring up my dope sheet as well, and in fact, I will bring out another one for the timeline, so I've got my record buttons in the middle there. So let's animate our snake sort of moving up in some way. Now I'm not suggesting this is the best rig for a snake, there's probably better rigs out there, but this is just the very basics. So let's make him move upwards and then strike at something if he was some kind of adder. So this is a good base position. So if we select all our bones and press I, and I'm going to keyframe the location and the rotation. Now it does seem kind of pointless keyframing the location for these pieces along here, because if I press G to grab, they can't really move anywhere, they only rotate, whereas this is the only one that can actually move. I'm just using location and rotation so that I can quickly select them all with A and then press I, lock rot. And it's more out of habit because a lot of the time you do have armatures that need movement as well as the rotation. So there's my first keyframe on frame one. So let's say he takes a second to move upwards, so that's about 25. I turn to work in PAL, which is 25 frames per second but I think the basic settings, if I go over to output, are for film, which is 24. You can change it to 25. I find it a bit easier with 25 because it's easier to think about seconds in multiples of 25 rather than 24 and I have to try and add up 24s. So he's going to move up after 25 seconds. So let's start rotating things. So he moves up into this weird position and then A to select everything and I to set the location rotation. Now it'd be easier if I had my record button on, so let's do that now for the next one. We want this to be quite quick, so he strikes out very fast, so that can be for now we'll say half a second, so somewhere around there, and we'll do the strike motion, and I'm just selecting the bones and rotating them. And because I had record selected, it's recorded all that rotation. Now because I've set record, 
We've probably got some extra keyframes in here. Yes, we've got the scale as well. We can delete those channels later on. That's not a problem. So it's struck out there and let's just scrub along our timeline with right click and see what's happening. And we want them to go back to this position here. So we can just duplicate this keyframe, Shift D to duplicate and move that to frame 50. So we've got a two second animation. Let's bring our end to 50 over here so that we can loop it. And I made a mistake there because I only had one bone selected. So here I've got one bone selected, so I only duplicated that one bone. So now if I select all, now if I go to the dope sheet summary at the top there, Shift D, select all those bones, move them across, that's a bit better. Okay, that's a very slow striking snake. It's more a worm strike. So what we can do is we can select the top keyframes, move our playhead to here, and then scale them in with S, and let's see what that looks like. That's more like it, isn't it? Or Dangerous Snake. And just as a quick reminder, remember your output settings if you really wanted to show off what you've done. Your output settings are here, so don't go straight into the temp folder. And if you want to change it to a film format, FFmpeg video, encoding, and H.264 is the most commonly used and probably the best for compression and file size. So there we have it, the very basics of animating with bones. In the next session, we'll be talking about characters and how you can understand more complex rigs. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.